nobody is going to do it for us. That's right. If we are all running away, you know, when are we going to make it? We have to stay in Africa, develop in Africa, and then show to the world that Africa have a better image than the one they portray in the West. It's the most unique thing that we have as Gambians. Like, we interact with one another, we live with one another, it doesn't matter how big the family is. We say everything, no matter how little it is, and people are content with that. That even if things are going hard, you can still observe smiling faces under each and every person that you meet along the street. So that is a plus for everybody in the Gambia, and that is why I'm a proud Gambian and a proud African, and I believe I can make it, and I'm going nowhere but in the Gambia. <laughs> Nobody is going to do it for us. That's right. If we are all running away, you know, when are we going to make it? We have to stay in Africa, develop in Africa, and then show to the world that Africa have a better image than the one they portray in the West. I think this is what we all need to do as Africans. And then we promote that as Pan-Africans and also as Gambians. Excellent. I couldn't have said it better myself, actually. You know, I propose that you come and do some shows with me. This brother's got it going on. Yeah. But seriously, um, you know, I think that the, the, the misrepresentation of Africa um, has, wow, I, I mean, it permeated my brain. And I knew because I was coming from a Pan-African background, but still, you know, the images are forced upon us. So I think you young Gambians have a responsibility yeah. to show the other side of Gambia, the Gambia that, you know, we diasporians and many people in the West don't see. They just don't see it. Exactly. I think that is the work of the academics. That is the work that we need to do as young scholars. For far too long, people have been portraying Africa negatively to the outside world. And we know that that was done by individuals whose sole aim was to dominate Africa, to exploit Africa's resources, and then to continue to colonize us politically. Now, our role as academics, as young scholars, is how do we make sure that this picture is changed from the literature itself, going back to rewrite the books, to rewrite the history of Africa, and then to show to the world that we have a better image that the, that the world is actually seen as of today. And then you also come to realize that we need to invest in Africa because foreign in investment always leads to capital flies and etc. Because people who mm -hmm. come in and invest, at the end they can take all the resources and then you come to realize that it becomes another challenge for us. But when Africans invest, the money stays in Africa, which is a plus. It can enhance, it yeah. can help. When it comes to employment, when it comes to you know coming up with all the facilities and then enhancing the development that we own, that we all desire as Africans and etc. I think that is what we need to do as we speak, and that is what we all Africans need to be thinking into that particular line, like trying to see how we can repent that particular picture shown by the outsiders yes. about Africa because they do. in fact let me tell you that was this quotation that I read it was actually done by a British parliamentarian Lord Macaulay in 1835 he speaks about Africa and then he said in order for the West to dominate Africa they need to overthrow our very backbone and that is our education system when we believe that everything that is Western is correct then they can dominate us forever exactly and that is 1835 they've been working on those bases so today it is high time because we know the realities let us try to rewrite the history let us try to work again and attract investment in africa by africans